Welcome to Defending Digital. I'm Chad Warner. Today's topic, how to use OpenDNS for free home internet security and filtering. If I told you there's a way to get basic internet security and web filtering for your whole house for free, would you be interested? I was when I first learned about OpenDNS over a decade ago, and I've been using it ever since. I've also seen OpenDNS used at businesses, public libraries, and churches, though they're not necessarily using the free plan I'll describe here. OpenDNS can give your home network the following features for free. One, customizable content filtering. Two, malware and botnet protection. Three, phishing protection. Let's learn more about OpenDNS and how to set it up. What's the threat? Think of all the devices on your home network. You probably have multiple computers, multiple phones, and several other devices, from tablets to smart TVs to video game consoles. They're all requesting data from the internet, which flows into your home through your home internet connection. You don't need me to tell you that the internet contains dangers such as malware and phishing. And if you're a parent, you certainly don't need me to tell you that the internet contains a lot of content that you don't want your kids consuming. Your devices are probably not all running anti-malware software. Even if they are, a family member could manage to get around it or deactivate it. And your devices probably don't all have parental controls or web filtering software. And even if they are, a family member could manage to get around it or deactivate it. So how can you increase your security? OpenDNS works at the network level, so it protects all the devices on your home network, regardless of their operating system or browser. In that way, it's different than security software, parental control software, or web filtering software that runs locally on each device. That makes OpenDNS harder to get around, though it's not impossible. How does OpenDNS work? When you request a website, your device makes a request to the domain name service, DNS. It's basically a directory that tells the IP, internet protocol address, associated with the domain names that we're used to. For example, the IP address for opendns.com is 146.112.62.105. Usually these DNS requests go through your ISP, your internet service provider. But if you direct them through OpenDNS instead, then OpenDNS can filter based on your settings. Let's see how you can benefit from OpenDNS. How to configure your router. To send your home's DNS request through OpenDNS, you need to configure your router to use OpenDNS for its DNS servers. The steps will vary based on your router, so I have a link in the blog post that goes over to OpenDNS's instructions. They have instructions for many routers, as well as general instructions if your router isn't listed. How to configure OpenDNS. OpenDNS has several plans you can check out. Some are free and others are paid. I recommend starting with a free plan unless you see something compelling in a paid plan. OpenDNS Home has all the features of OpenDNS Family Shield, and both are free. The difference is that with Family Shield, you must use the pre-configured internet filtering, which blocks what they call adult content. But with Home, you can configure the content filtering yourself. So I recommend signing up for Home. After you log into your account, you'll follow the steps to add your network. OpenDNS will ask if you have a dynamic IP address. If you have cable or DSL internet, you most likely have a dynamic IP address. Because your ISP may give you a different IP address after your modem reboots, such as because of a power outage, you should install OpenDNS Updater on the computer that will most frequently be connected to your home internet connection. It only needs to run on one computer, which will keep OpenDNS informed of your home's IP address. Next, you should configure your network settings in OpenDNS. Click the Settings tab at the top of the OpenDNS dashboard. You'll then see a small menu on the top left of the page and you'll start on the web content filtering page. Now I know this is a little hard to follow in audio, um, so I'll have all of these steps written in text as part of the blog post, and I'll also have an embedded video that walks through these settings. So we'll start with web content filtering. You wanna choose your filtering level. You can choose from the predefined levels or choose custom, and then check the boxes for the categories you want to block. Below each predefined level, you can click view to see the categories that are included in that level. Or you can click Customize to copy the settings from that predefined level into the Custom level, where you can then customize the categories. If you choose Custom, you can hover over the categories to see descriptions. You can also see a full list of the categories and their descriptions on the OpenDNS website, and I've linked to that from the blog post. 
You can block and unblock categories as you see fit for your needs and your family. When you're finished, click Apply. At the bottom of the page, you'll see Manage Individual Domains. This allows you to always block or always allow specific domains, regardless of the filtering that you chose above. OpenDNS recommends entering these as the root of the domain. For example, you would put example.com, not www.example.com. Putting the root of the domain blocks all the subdomains of example.com, including www.example.com, mail.example.com, etc. You can even use OpenDNS to block top level domains, TLDs, such as .cn for China, .ru for Russia. Those are just examples. You can pick others. That blocks all the sites within those top level domains. Now, in the small menu at the top left of the page, click Security to get to the security settings. I recommend enabling all the options here. Uh, there are three. There's malware slash botnet protection. And the way this is described is, quote, when certain internet scale botnets are discovered or particularly malicious malware hits, we offer protection to all our users so that as many people as possible can be protected from the threat, end quote. The next one is phishing protection. And this is described as, quote, by enabling phishing protection, you'll protect everyone on your network from known phishing sites using the best data available, end quote. And then the third option is blocking internal IP addresses. Uh, there's a fairly technical description. Don't worry if you don't understand it. I do recommend enabling that as well. The next section is stats and logs. Uh, you can uncheck the enable stats and logs option if you don't want OpenDNS to record your DNS lookups. And finally, you have advanced settings. Uh, if you told OpenDNS that you have a dynamic IP address while you were setting up your account uh, in your network, then you'll see enable dynamic IP update is enabled here. Uh, if it's not enabled, and it should be, then enable it now. Uh, and I have a link in the blog post to some more details about that. Test OpenDNS. After you complete your configuration, you want to test that OpenDNS is filtering by attempting to browse to a website you know should be blocked by your filters. You should see an OpenDNS block page. If you don't, review the steps above or check out OpenDNS support. There's a link in the blog post. Now, especially in the first month of using it, it wouldn't hurt to do this test regularly to ensure your network is still running through OpenDNS. Additional notes. If you wonder why a domain is being blocked or not blocked, you can see the OpenDNS support page, why is this domain blocked or not blocked? And they explain it there. Uh, again, I have a link in the blog post. Now, OpenDNS filtering only works on your home network. If a device goes outside your home network by leaving your home or by switching to a different network, such as uh, if a phone switches from your home Wi-Fi to its own mobile data network, uh, then OpenDNS will no longer protect that device. Also, a user can get around OpenDNS by manually changing the IP addresses for the DNS servers within their device. Uh, now, if you're worried about your kids getting around OpenDNS this way, make sure they're using limited, limited or non-administrator accounts on their devices so that they can't access the device's DNS settings. Because we're concerned about not only security, but also privacy, I do want to point out that if you use OpenDNS, your DNS requests will go through OpenDNS. So they will be able to see which websites you visit. Uh, again, this is only the domains, not the pages within the domains. So example.com, not example.com, slash about.html. Uh, now, uh, if your ISP, um, uh, or, or just something to know is your ISP, um, your internet service providers such as Comcast or Spectrum, uh, they are already able to see that information. Uh, and do you really trust them any more than you trust OpenDNS? Uh, and for what it's worth, OpenDNS is owned by the networking giant company Cisco. So what should you do? Step one, sign up for OpenDNS. I recommend OpenDNS Home, but you can choose a different plan. Two, configure your router to use OpenDNS. Three, Install the OpenDNS updater on the computer that will be most frequently connected to your home internet connection. Four, configure your OpenDNS settings. Five, test OpenDNS. 
So as I've said several times, uh, there's a blog post as well as a video that uh, accompany this recording. Uh, you can find that as well as other security and privacy tips at DefendingDigital.com.